Ruddy Edmonds, Righteous Among Nations Hero. Ro Master Sergeant Roderick Ruddy Edmonds took action against Nazi Germany and saved the lives of numerous Jewish servicemen and put his own life on the line in the process. Master Sergeant Roddy Edmonds' background stands as after effects of what made him so remarkable. He was born on August 20th, 1919, uh, as Roderick Roddy Warren Edmonds to Thomas Edmonds and Mary Jane Sexton. He had three brothers named Thomas, Leon, and Robert who also served in the military. His father worked primarily as a wallpaper hanger. His mother unfortunately passed away when he was three. He grew up in at least five different households with his father and brothers. He practiced a simple but strong Christian faith which was nurtured at the Vestal Master of Church. He grew up isolated from Europe's problems and to a certain degree his hometown in the USA expressed a level of anti-Semitic beliefs. He graduated high school from in 1938. He enlisted in the army when he was 22 on March 17, 1941, at a fort near Chattanooga, Tennessee. Two years later, he had been promoted to master sergeant and was stationed at Fort Jackson, North Carolina, and was in charge of training his own men. One such man, Lester Tanner, said he didn't throw his rank around. You knew he knew his stuff and he got across to you without being arrogant or inconsiderate. I admired him for his command. Raleigh was part of the 106th Division, a group regiment command system that would later become known as the Headquarters Division. The 422nd Infantry Regiment was its parent group. He and his men were untested in green when they were deployed into the late stages of the American landing in Europe. Lester Tanner and Roddy were... Lester Tanner was now a junior non-commissioned officer and Roddy were captured together during the Battle of the Bulge. Germany's last offensive attacks on December 16, 1944, after Allies forced a successful invasion on D-Day. Tanner again commented on Master Sergeant Roddy's leadership, say, stating that we were in combat on the front lines for only a short period, but it was clear that Roddy Edmonds was a man of great courage who led his men with the same capability we had come to know him for in the States. Roddy Edmonds and Lester Tanner and Paul Stern, thousands of other Allied troops, were captured during the Battle of the Bulge. They surrendered to the Germans who outmatched them with tanks when they only had rifles. The thousands of men were forced on to death marches. Roddy and his men were forced to walk 31 miles without food or water. They were then forced onto boxcars to be taken to Stileg 9A, Stileg 9B, without food or water. And there was no room to sit or sleep or no place to use the restroom. The only thing there was to eat was snow if you could get to it. On Christmas Eve, the boxcars were bombed by the British. And the Americans were killed in the bombing, including Roddy's chaplain. Hank Friedman was one of the pals held with Roddy, said, At the start of the bombing, I remember Roddy saying, Men, if you've never prayed before, now is the time to pray to God that he will help us live through this. They arrived at Bad Harbor at 3 a.m. The townspeople screamed insults at them and threw objects from above and around them as they marched up a frozen, snow-swallowed mountain road to Stalag 9B. There, some of the men pulling gave up the fact that they were Jewish, believing that their status as American prisoners of war would protect them, while others were forced to strip down completely and stand out in the frozen night. The Jewish servicemen were then separated from the others and held within a prison within a prison, surrounded by barbed wire, and lived in barracks with lice-infested mattresses, straw mattresses. On January 25th of 1945, all the non-com officers from corporal to sergeant were transferred to the, from the worst German prison camp within five miles, within a five miles radius to Stilag 9A, including all the Jewish POWs. Paul Stern had just recently become been made corporal, and he recalls that the privates left behind were sent to hard labor camps where the most died. Edmonds, Tanner, and Stern were then held together with around 1,290 other captured servicemen in Stileg 9A, and were held in Barrack 1. Roddy's youngest son, Chris Edmonds, estimated that there are approximately... 200 of these men were Jewish, uh, based on the accounts from Lester Tanner and Paul Stern. While held, Roddy recorded the events from the day, the names and addresses of his men, and drew pictures of the restaurant some of he and his servicemen planned on opening after the war, though nothing came of the plans, and, and such. The German army from 1935 to 1945 had a strict anti-Jewish policy. 
When orders came on January 26th of 1945, the day after they arrived, that all Jewish Amer that only the Jewish Americans were to report the next day at roll call. The American servicemen were well aware of the Germans' treatment of the Jews, as the Jewish servicemen had been instructed to destroy any evidence that would re reveal them to be Jewish, including their dog tags, which had a small H stamped on them for Hebrew, so that th their comrades would know how to bury them if they were killed, and any small prayer books they had with them. At the time... Jewish prisoners were being shipped out to hard labor camps where death rates were high. Roddy told his men, we're not doing that. Tomorrow, we're not doing that. The Geneva Convention affords only name, rank, and serial number, and so that's what we're going to do. All of us are falling out. Paul Stern that it recounted the events there, though some of his, some of the words and phrasing that Roddy Edmonds and the major Jews differ in various accounts. The, G the German commander, Major Sigmund of the from the camp, came up to to Roddy Edmonds after all 1,292 pals were found standing in front of the barracks in formation. And at the front was Roddy Edmonds and several other non-coms, including Paul Stern and Lester Tanner. The major commanders told Roddy, they cannot all be Jews, and Roddy replied, we are all Jews here. The major pulled his pistol, Lugar, and jammed it against Roddy's forehead. I am giving you one last chance, Sergeant. You will have your Jewish men. Step forward, I will shoot you. But Roddy Edmonds did not waver and replied, the Geneva Convention says that if a soldier is captured, he only need provide his name, rank, and serial number. If you shoot me, you will have to shoot it. You will have to kill us all because we know who you are and you will have to stand for war crimes after we win this war. The short term effect was that he saved the 200 Jewish servicemen and they were never removed from the camp until they were liberated later. And from these 200 men, more people were born, including Roddy Edmonds' own family, as he put his life on the line for his men. Because of his incredible action, his votes more officially named Righteous Among Nations. On January 27th of 2016, 71 day, years to the day, Roddy told that major, German major that he would not give up his Jews. He was officially named Righteous Among Nations, Avery Israel's highest honor for Gentiles who saved Jewish lives. It was held at the Israel Embassy in Washington, D.C., and President Obama, Lester Tanner, and Ambassador Dermish spoke at the ceremony. Chris Edmonds accepted the awards in his father's place and has nominated him for a Congressional Medal of Honor. He's also founded Roddick's Code, an organization that allows him to go out and meet people who are interested in his father's story and, rela and recount it to them. After the war, Roddy returned home and married of uh, someone and had a daughter with her. He was still in the army and for the Korean War and during it he divorced. After the Korean War he returned home to his hometown and married Marianne Edmonds, a woman 16 years his junior and together they had two sons, Mike and Chris. He worked as a manager at the Knoxville Journal and out, out at Oak Ridge. He later got into sales related work for mobile homes and cable TVs. When he was alive, Roddy, had, Roddy coached a few baseball teams. He died on August 8, 1985 from congestive heart failure, 12 days shy of his 66th birthday when Chris was 26. His, one of his great grandsons was named Roger after him. Avner Chabelle, the chairman of the Gad Vashem Holocaust Museum and Memorial, said Master Sergeant Roddy Edmonds seemed like an ordinary American soldier, but he w had an extraordinary sense of responsibility and dedication to his fellow be human beings. The choices and actions of Master Sergeant Roddy Edmonds set an example for his fellow American soldiers as they, st as they stood united against the barbaric evils of the Nazis. Roddy Edmonds was certainly a very special man and very deserving of his righteous award. His actions are inspiring. He was an unsung hero, but that's how he wanted it. Roddy didn't tell anyone of his actions. He just returned home and went back to his life. His actions are more relatable than some other men who gained the recognition for their combat skills, something we as students have never experienced. 
But Roddy essentially stood up to a very big bully. He went from being a bystander to an upstander, and his men followed his lead. They, like all other Allied, the Allied forces, could have taken the Nazis' orders and rolled over. But instead, they made their voices heard on that cold January morning, and their voices will ring in the minds of minds of all the learned Roddy Edmonds forever. And as time went on, other voices joined those 1,292 voices for, by people who discovered one man's courage. I feel like I've made a friend, one I will never meet, but whose legacy will live on in my heart and as someone I can think of when I'm faced with a difficult decision between what is right and what is easy. A special thanks to everyone who directly and indirectly helped me make, my, make and complete my NHD project, especially my big brother Ronnie. The number of articles out there about Roddy Edmonds is an outstanding and it is wonderful to get to contribute to educating people on his inspiring actions. Thank you.